I feel like I can talk to Bob about the color of something in great detail, like we were walking along a stone fence. I am absolutely amazed at how fresh and how substantial and how interesting they continue to be over time. His emotions move so quickly and they're they're very intense when they move. I mean it's really striking when you when you're around Bob because sometimes he, he gets And hurt. with Bob's painting I go to one and I learn it by heart. When I see his paintings um, a lot of times I don't really understand them but uh, on a deeper level I, I, I know that they're true. I was drawn to the work so strongly that I just said, you know, I, I think we can really work with this. There was a quantum leap in quality that I recognized in the work. He just had somehow pushed his work from basically um, uh, images of scenes around Olympia. They were all landscapes pretty much landscape. And I kept abstracting. They were getting more and more abstract. And I kind of discovered about painting around things rather than the thing and having the thing emerge. I try different things, not so much as though I'm exhausted with what I'm doing, but I, I thought I maybe feel I got as close as I could get to what I'm trying to do. You know, it was that search. I would say my life has been a search. In the search, I didn't go about it academically, that, but to feel it and understand it, it has been more or less the way that I've gone about searching. For me, Bob's art is very personal because uh, it, it seems that he um, that's the way he is trying to express truth. There's a lot of vitality in his paintings and there's a lot of stillness and sereneness. There's a lot of uh, calm and yet there's all that surface action. And um, Bob is all of those things. I'm not interested in startling people <laughs> or something of that kind. I'm really interested in trying to, like you say, go to that place and uh, see what I can come back with, you know. What I find is, is that, in fact, his paintings are, like, extraordinarily articulate. I mean, that, that they're, they're, it's as if, you know, if he were if the paintings spoke, they're, they're real detailed and they're real concise and there's, they're multi-layered and they're, mm -hmm. um, it just feels like you, know, you can just dive into them. I mean, I know that we have a painting in front of our bed. It's a Gildas painting and it's as if you can always just kind of go further into it. Because it's like he lives in a world that he needs to translate. And, and it comes out in the paintings. Probably the paintings that he's done that mean the most to me are the ones of his father um, that actually he allowed me to have in my office for a while. And when our men's group would meet, um, it was like his father was looking over us. But after doing faces, I got into doing uh, tablets. But there were a lot of them were graves. I, you know, I'd do a rounded top as though it was a headstone. And then think of it as a painting or, you know, play around with the idea or it was weathered. Wherever I go, I always visit graveyards. And because the stones become so weathered, you couldn't read anything on it. And it had lichen all over it. But it was so beautiful. His technique is very unique, and what I saw originally in it was a relationship to the um, sensibility of the Northwest School, and by that I mean the work of Mark Toby and some of the early work of Morris Graves. The difference um, that I see and the uniqueness in Bob's work that I see is that he 
starts his investigation in the material as opposed to starting his investigation in the spiritual. Say, if Toby's white writing, um, he used his white writing in an attempt to give us an equivalent to a spiritual state often. Whereas Bob starts with the material and somehow it culminates or it evolves into this spiritual vision on the canvas, um, almost accidentally. You look at them and you just keep seeing, you see more and more and more. A, a, an area that looked gray as you go up and you really look at it and the light falls on it in different ways, you see that it's layered, that there's a lot of intricacy, that there's almost like a whole, it's kind of like the Northwest, how things fall here in the forest and then they layer in, they decompose and finally you just end up with this really rich, beautiful surface in the woods, you know, with the, the ground underneath is beautiful and the ferns on top. It's very intricately layered and you can discover that if you have a Gillis painting in your house because you have the opportunity then to spend a lot of time with it and to see really how much depth the painting has. Um, the, the paintings that, that I like of him are paintings that are, they have real things on. It's a flower, it's a bird, it's a, maybe one leaf. And I need to keep looking to see how did he come to have this pure white flower out of the shadows of what actually he did. He didn't do the flower. He did something else and the shadows of that is the most pure, beautiful flower. He's working on understanding life. He's not doing a painting. Visiting it at his home, I, I've been, it's really come home to me that he, he, his life is his art. It's very closely integrated. We have one of a painting in our bedroom that when it's a cold winter day and the sun's on that painting, I could I all I have to re restrain myself to go up to it and just want to put my hand on it like I'm putting my hand on a hot stone out in the woods. I mean it it just feels like it starts to feel like that to me. It starts to feel like it's actually made of a stone that could absorb the heat that I could put my hand on it and sort of change the season if I wanted to. Every artist creates a language. So if you were to look at my work, you'd begin seeing certain kinds of ways that I express things. And I'm trying to find something, some idea that, or some way of working that uh, that I could spend, like I said, the rest of my life doing. So I'm, I'm on this search. So nothing so far has seemed to be quite have done that. I haven't got an idea that. And I may return back to the uh, tablets, but uh, I don't know. Oh, have you brought the